This video is sponsored by Hostinger. If you're looking for a reliable and affordable web host, Hostinger has everything from shared hosting to VPSs to cloud hosting and more. Their most popular shared plan includes 100 gigabytes of SSD storage, free email hosting, an SSL certificate, Git and SSH access, and much more. Perfect for a portfolio or small business website. You can choose to pay monthly or you can pay up to four years in advance. Click the link in the description below and enter the code Traversy Media to get 10% off today. Hey, what's going on guys? Today we're going to look at GitHub Copilot and I'm sure that you've seen a bunch of videos on this, probably some clickbaity videos talking about it stealing your jobs and all that. This is more of just an objective look at it. Uh, I signed up for the waitlist a little while ago and got approved and I've been messing with it over the past week or so. And uh, it's something that I think is going to be really helpful and something that I like. I mean, we talk a lot about, we joke a lot about having to go to Stack Overflow and copy and paste. This is essentially like having that right in your editor, only better. Um, so I like it. I don't think it's going to steal anybody's job. I think it's going to help us do our job. Um, so we're going to take a look at it. But first, let's talk about how it actually works. So Copilot is built on the Codex AI system from OpenAI. I'm sure a lot of you have heard of OpenAI's GPT-3. Um, Codex is basically a special version of GPT-3 built for programming tasks. And since we're using AI, it needs training data. So it's actually been trained on uh, source code from publicly available sources, including public GitHub repos. And this may cause you to ask if the code is just copied. I guess only 0.1% of the time, um, the suggestions that it makes contain some snippets that are, are verbatim from the actual training set, only 0.1%. And you can read more how it works on the website. So it tells you, gives you some examples. And then down at the bottom here, you get some frequently asked questions. Uh, but I really want to focus on actually using it and kind of giving you a, a demonstration. If you want to use it, you have to sign up for the wait list. So you can just come here and click sign up. And, um, you know, you can just add yourself to the wait list. So let's jump into VS Code. And I already have it installed, as you can see over here, my extensions right here. So we have GitHub Copilot. All right. And I just have an index.js file. And I want to just start off with some simple examples, some simple functions that do specific things. So let's start off with something really simple. Let's say we want a function to generate a random number. So I might call it ran random num. And you'll see that we get this gray code that just pops in here. And this is this is a solution that Copilot is suggesting just based on the function name. So it's a function that takes in a minimum and maximum and returns a random number in between that. Now, if I want to accept this, I can either click here on accept or I can hit tab, which is probably what you're going to do most of the time. And it'll put that code in the editor. OK, another thing I want to show you is if we do that again and I hover over this and I click on open copilot or control enter, it'll open in the side some of these uh, so different solutions that you can look over. All right, so let's say we want this one, we can go ahead and click accept. Now, what's even cooler than that is we can go ahead and just put a comment in here. So if we wanna do the same thing, create a function to create a random number, let's say create function that generates a random and it'll even try to continue your comment for you. So we'll just say random number. We'll hit enter and then it'll give me the first line of the function. So if I want to accept that, I'll hit tab. I'll hit enter again. It puts in the function body. I'll accept that and we can just create the function purely by just a comment telling it what we want. And this is this is obviously something pretty simple, but some people may have to go to Stack Overflow to create a function like this. And that's one of the great things about this is you can just do it right from your editor and you can get multiple solutions. Let's say we want a function to get yesterday's date. We'll say create function to get yesterday's date. And I'll accept that with tab and there we go. Let's say we want to create a function to convert Fahrenheit to Celsius tab. There we go. So just functions like this, just to do a specific task, this is really good for. And we can also use it to generate data. So let's say we want, let's say create array of numbers. And we'll click tab, we'll accept that. I'd probably change this to const. 
Um, but yeah, so we get a, uh, an array of numbers one through 10. Let's say we want to create uh, an array of names, or we'll say an array of five names. And there we go. So we get and it, now it uses const because it saw that I already used const. Now, let's say we want to do some objects. We'll say create an array of we'll say an array of five objects with ID, name and age. Okay, so const people is one, two, three, four, five, and then it ends. Okay, so you can actually just specify, you know, what what these you want these objects to look like, what fields they should have. Now let's say we want to do something with this data. So I'll put a comment and let's say order people by age. And it gives us this function here. So just people dot sort. And if we want to check that out, let's say ordered people and now you can see we have them ordered by age. Um, we could go you know, further into this and let's say get only people whose name starts with J. So we have John and James and order by age ascending, oops, ascending. Okay, so we'll hit tab, save, and let's console log filtered people and clear this up and run it. And now you can see that we get just James and John and they're ordered by age ascending. So Copilot's great for, for doing this sort of sorting, filtering, all that stuff. Um, but I just want to mention it's really important that you understand things like filter and sort and map and for each. These are really important um, high order array methods that you need to know when you're a JavaScript developer. So one of the fallbacks I can kind of see with this with Copilot is people not learning as much because they can just type in what to do. Uh, and it's important that you understand your code. All right, so I'm going to clear all this up and we'll go ahead and clear this up. And what I want to do now is start to work with a third party API. So I'm going to use JSON placeholder which is a fake rest API for testing and prototyping. And you can use different resources like posts, comments. I'm going to use to do's. So you see if we hit this URL, we get a list of 100 to do's with user ID, ID, title and completed. All right. Now, as far as the URL, I was going to just paste it in, but I decided to just try a comment and just say get the URL for JSON placeholder to do's and it did it. So I'll hit tab. It does put slash one in here. So we'll just get rid of that and we'll just get rid of var and use const. OK, and we don't need the comment. I just wanted to generate the, the URL. Now, another thing we're going to have to install node fetch since I'm not in the browser environment. I don't have access to the fetch API. So let's just npm init dash y and then npm install node dash fetch. All right, so then we'll just go ahead and bring that in. Let's say const fetch and that will auto complete for me. And we're going to go ahead and just have a comment that says create function to get to do's. OK, that's it. And we'll hit tab. So get to do's. And then it looks like it's going to make a request with fetch, turn to JSON and then get the data and sl use slice to get the first 10. So we could do that. Let's click on previous and see what else we got. So this one will get the data and return an object with all the fields and the values. And it knows that this API uses an ID title completed and user ID fields. So I'm going to click accept. OK, so now we have a function to get to do's and I didn't have to write any code. All I did was put this comment in and then we could use this to, to make sure it works by calling. Um, actually, let's console log get to do's and whoops get to do's. Now this returns a promise. So we're going to do dot then 
and let's say for our to do's. And I'm not going to use the autocomplete here because all I want to do, no pun intended, is console log the to do's. Yeah, console log to do's. All right, so let's try it. We'll run the file. And there we go. So it's just map it, getting the data, mapping through, and then we're console logging it. Uh, and I haven't used the, the dot then syntax in a long time. And I'll, I'll show you how we can do this with a sync await as well. But let's say we want to post a to do. Let's get rid of this and let's put a comment and we'll say create a function to post a to do. All right, so we'll go through this. Let's see what it gives us. Okay, so it gives us all everything we need as far as the, the headers, the content type. And then the body is going to be whatever is passed in here. All right, good. So that looks good to me. Let's try it out. So we want to run post to do. And it takes in a to do object, which will give a title. And it even will give me some sample values. We'll just do that title test completed false. And then that's going to return a promise. So we want to do dot then uh, response and res dot json and then dot then oops dot then and then we get the the data and we'll just console log it all right so let's try it out we'll run the file and there we go so we get a response back with our our data our title and completed and it also gives you the id which is 201 in this case all right so very very cool um, as far as a sync await goes, let's get rid of this. And all I'm going to do is start to create a function. I'll call it get to do's and you'll see it'll automatically put a sync in here. I'll click tab and then that looks good. It's just going to return the data. And then if we want to use that, remember this returns a promise. So we have and if we're using a sync await, we have to use this inside of an, an asynchronous function. So what we'll do is create an iffy, a function that runs automatically. And in here, we'll call this a sync and we'll create a function in here. And yeah, we'll just use that. So tab, that's just going to get the to do's, put it in this variable and then console log it. So I'm going to save that and let's run this. And now we're able to get all the to do's using a sync await. So this is just an example of using Copilot with, uh, you know, when you're dealing with a third party API. So let's clear everything up here and let's say that we're working with Express to create an API. So we could just take the basic parts of creating Express server and do them separately. For instance, we could say, you know, require Express or you could say require anything and that'll bring it in and then we could say init express okay so that will set app to express we could say start server and that would listen on a port um, but you can also go a little more higher level and just say create a basic express server we could even add a port we'll say on port 5000 Okay, and then we're just going to go through this. So I'll tab that and hit enter. Okay, so we're initializing Express, setting the port to what either the environment variable or 5000. And since this is such a long, big block of code, there's spaces as well. So we'll just hit enter until we see a new suggestion. So that's to include the static folder. Now we have listen on the port console log listening on the port and that's it so just this one comment gave me a basic server that i can run so if i install express and i run node index listening on 5000 so very very powerful stuff and then of course if we wanted to let's say we wanted to add um, middleware we'll say add express body parser middleware and there we go if we want to create a route let's go down under here and let's say create 
index row. Okay, next line. It's going to just send the index HTML from public, but obviously, you know, you would go in and change this stuff. I, I think it's going to just save us a ton of time, honestly. I, I, I'm really excited about this. And uh, I'm sure that there's so much more that I could do that I don't know about. I'm, I'm brand new to this, just like most people are. Now, as far as, um, as far as React goes, I didn't get too much of a chance to play with it with React. But if we create a React component, and let's just call it to do, right? And then I go up here and I want to, let's say I want to import use state, because I want to add some state. So import use state from React. And then what I thought was really cool is if I go where I would normally put my state, so right here, it'll automatically create a piece of state called text. Now text relates to to do's, right? So if I click tab and accept that, go on to the next line, we have editing completed. So notice that they all relate to what a to, what a to do would have. Now, of course, it might not be exactly what you want. Uh, you're probably going to go in and change these, but I thought it was pretty interesting that it chooses fields or you know state based on the component. Um, so for example, if I were to um, create one called login, all right, and then I go down here where I would put my state and look at that username. Next one, password. Next one, error, loading, logged in. And it's just going to keep guessing um, state that would relate to a login component. All right, so I don't know about you guys, but I think this is great. I find it really helpful, and I think it's going to speed up productivity. And, um, and, and it's just what it says. It's a, it's a pair program or it's a co-pilot. It's not going to take your job. So ignore the, the clickbaity videos and, and tweets that are talking about that. If that ever happens, it's not going to be for a very, very long time. Um, there's plenty of jobs that are going to get automated out before programmers. So, um, so just pay no attention to that. But I would suggest getting on the wait list if you're not already on it and just start to mess with it and, uh, you know, like I said, I just started using it, so I'm sure there's there's a lot that uh, that you can do that I don't know about. But that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm losing my voice now, uh, but I will see you next time.